go pick up a brand new book. Check out some upcoming videos with the Jamaica Cottage Shop in Vermont. In fact, they have free shed plans in the description below you can grab. And we have an upcoming hands-on tiny house building workshop again in Regalwood, North Carolina. RelaxShacks.com to check it. Something mesmerizing and fun just sitting by a fire. Zoning out. Ooh. I don't know what that was. It was less a uh, Gregorian chant, more a zombie moan. Hey, what's up, guys? DeepRelaxShacks.com. Uh, if you dig this video, hit the like button. Please subscribe and yada, yada, yada. I want to show you today, and I know there's other videos out there on this, but this one might be a slightly different approach. I want to talk about wood stove heat. We'll have another video coming up on whether or not you should choose a wood stove for your tiny house or for your house in general, because there's a lot of ups and downs, pros and cons to this form of heat. This is a junk, I couldn't even tell you, it's some like almost no name brand model I bought at Lowe's ages ago. And uh, I don't know, not ages ago, maybe 10 years ago. And it's been working pretty well. I think I bought this wood stove for $600, $500 and change. And one thing I love, it has the front glass here. I call it caveman or cavewoman TV. Because if you're going to have a wood stove, you're going to have fire. You want to be able to see it, to see the warmth. It's entertaining. It's mesmerizing. It's soothing. I love it. My wife, not so much a fan of the wood stove. There was a period where oil got really high in price and our furnace busted. Long story, long and uh, I heated solely in New England, right outside of Boston with a wood stove, which is problematic when you leave the house for long periods of time. We'll address that some other time. Uh, for many years, all I used was this wood stove to heat my house, which is about 800 square feet, uh, five of us living here. Uh, but it was cheap, although a lot of work, you know, getting up at 3 a.m. in the morning to rekindle that fire when it got really cold. Anyway, my wife doesn't like to, um, mess with the fire um it's a chore and slightly perhaps out of fear you know just playing with fire you shouldn't so this is unprofound here's one thing i do when i'm starting fires and i'm starting to make these like ready to go fire packs for her we have these paper towel tubes all the time anytime i get junk mail things like this i uh, crumple it up to keep it aerated enough shove it into these tubes and this you've probably seen, but the next step you probably haven't. Um, so I'm just filling up these tubes. I kind of see this as reusing, recycling via BTUs. So I'm going to shove all this junk in here. And then I often go around my yard when I'm working on things building outside, um, as I do constantly. And just systematically through the wind, you know, it's just the cycle of trees. Um, sticks drop all the time dead ones they're all over the place so while i'm cleaning up my yard as i'm going to do anyway i'm doubling my time by kind of saving or throwing in the corner of the yard all these sticks which i later on use for fires i like to think that having you know clean up here, here's a bundle of them right here Ugh. these are just random sticks i didn't pull down for a tree they fell on their own they're dead they're dried out already and you'll know that by that snap they make you don't want that bending twizzler rubber sound you want that that one's really dead, almost rotten. That bone snap right there. Um, so what I do is once I've stuffed all this junk, here's a receipt for Ikea. Maybe I'll save that, that could be a write-off. Um, you know, packaging from something on Amazon. Shove all this crap in this tube. And then I simply take a piece of string, uh, hemp if you can, because it's not gonna have toxins in it, but we're not burning a lot of string here. So worst case, this is nylon based. I'm not going to deeply inhale this or anything. I lay down the string and I'm going to change the camera position in a second and show you how I assemble this ready to go fire with this almost being the wick in the center to get your wood stove fire going. My wife or whoever doesn't want to deal with this, or if it's getting late and I just want to start a fire without having to build one from scratch, which could be a little bit time consuming. And I don't want to use fire starters, which I have to purchase. Uh, while it takes some time, I'm going to build this like ready to go bundle and I'll show you right here. All right, going to lay the string down and just start amassing some of the smaller sticks. Again, making sure they're dry. Ideally, I want ones longer than this. I kind of busted those up to show you that was, that was kind of stupid. So just take a bunch of these sticks. You want small ones. I mean, you learn this in Boy Scouts. I was in Boy Scouts, Eagle Scout. I was a Cub Scout leader, all that. You want like the tiny, tiny, even smaller than this, the little kindling sticks. This is what will get going by a match alone. 
So this is the kind of stuff, or smaller, you want to work in there. Um, so I'm going to amass a ton of these. So I'm going to build this bundle that eventually is going to have this in the center of it, then some bigger sticks on top, and I'm going to tie it nice and tightly. And that, in one fell swoop, is one big lumpy bundle I can then place in the wood stove, making sure this end is sticking out so I can light it. And light, then you'll get your fire. So I'm going to add a few more here. this junk. I love it because I'm cleaning up my yard and heating my house at the same time and I feel in a way that that's a victory. Here comes my dog because he sees I have sticks. Here Zeus. You want a stick? Here. <laughs> Here you go. Nah, he's not interested. I'll probably choke on the thing anyway. So, a couple more sticks. Get some big boys in there. You can throw, like, see this one right here I'm not going to use yet. I'll put next to the wood stove to dry it out once I get a light going, you know, and a good fire going, because when this dries out, it will be good to go. And when a fire is hot enough, of course, even if it's damp, you can throw it in there. But I don't want to start a fire with that, because that would just be silly. It just wouldn't work. So more of this junk in here. Throw that sucker in here. This one, that one, this is dry. It did rain recently, so I'm happy to pick through these to find some good ones. And some of the stuff's really punky when it has all like the mushrooms and lichen and all that stuff growing out. Those, oh, the dog's interested in that one. Those aren't going to light so well. Yeah? No? Alright, I'll give you one later. Alright. So pile these in. Tie the bundle. Like so. I would add more sticks in this. This is just the example, but it should work. Uh, you know, just a simple granny knot a couple times. Now the, now the dog's eating the camera. That bump was the dog <laughs> sniffing and trying to nip the camera. So tie this together, and we're going to throw this. See, it's one handy bundle. You can pile up a couple of these. We're going to th uh, throw this into the wood stove and light it. All right, here's the bundle. Make sure the uh, thing's sticking out at one end. And pop that mamma jamma into your wood stove. Of course, make sure the thing is... Uh, small enough where you can actually fit it in the wood stove, because that would be quite erroneous on your part. Uh, grab some matches, we're gonna light this, and if I do it right, it will light usually with one match. <laughs> I say that, I'm probably jinxing myself right now. Let's try it, though. By the way, this is my weird rock collection, you know, because I absorb heat that I keep. Uh, I'm just into, like, rocks and stuff on, uh, on top of my wood stove. This is something I found. I own a little bit of land uh, in 29 Palms, California, where we do some tiny house building, maybe a workshop coming up. Cool rock I found there. Cheap souvenirs. This is one of Missouri. Some geodes we found. They have the crystals inside. I don't know if you can see that sparkle. Kind of neat. I don't know. I just love this stuff because the history behind it makes you wonder, you know, what did these rocks see once upon a time? We are nothing by comparison. Not that this video is about the rocks. Look at this one, too. I found this in Missouri. Pretty, uh, pretty cool on a treehouse build. Looks like a meteorite. Okay, got my kitchen matches here. I buy these all the time. They're cheap. They're handy to have, you know, in a prepping, homesteading kind of way. And we'll see if we can get this sucker lit. I hopefully, you know, as I was narrating, I might have been overzealous with uh, packing that too. Because if you pack it too tightly, the kindling or the paper itself doesn't get enough air. So it doesn't start so easily. So I'm lighting the end right here. Starting to go. You want that tube, the cardboard, to catch in fire. It's important to put some cardboard in there because cardboard um, will burn for a little bit longer. You need that flame to maintain so as to light the rest of the kindling. If it's just paper, paper goes up and uh, produces a lot of light and flame real quickly, but then it just burns out real quick. You're left with nothing. You want that exposure of the flame to the wood. So this is starting. One of the sticks is catching already. Let's see if this goes. I'm going to move the camera in. It's going to be shaky. No Spielberg production here. Let me adjust it so you can see. So, <laughs> very exciting. We'll watch the fire here, see if this catches. And uh, if you're worried that's not going to catch, you can always take a few of the sticks and kind of rearrange and throw some on top. Like, for instance, here's a stick that fell out of the bundle. I'm going to place this conveniently right over where the flame happened to exist right now so that the flame, as it rises, is going to be hitting that stick and hopefully lighting it, keeping that fire going. It's a slow process, but if you put this bundle together correctly, it should burn and start up with one single match. 
I'll probably put this in fast forward because this is really, really boring. All right, you get the idea. Let me de-zoom here. Back this up. So you can see the fire's going right now. Uh, I haven't touched anything. I haven't adjusted the wood, which naturally you could do, but I wanted to show you that this is like a self-lighting fire. Um, I can tell, let me bring this in here. I don't know if you can see that right here that a lot of this wood isn't that dry which is slowed the starting of this fire I can see like moisture and actually water coming out of the wood so the fire the flames working too hard to dry out the wood before it ignites so the drier the wood the better that's common sense I would hope but this thing's starting and once it gets going you can throw on some bigger sticks eventually a log a nice dry one and you have your fire so uh, this is just a nice little fire to get things going simple little trick And for those of you who don't like messing with fire and want a couple uh, prep fires that are ready to go, just a little tidbit or uh, trick of the trade I thought I might share with you guys. Because a lot of times when I camp, you can actually put a couple of these in a plastic bag and have a campfire that's ready to go. So if light's fading, your fire is really, you know, and your firewood is more or less collected and uh, assembled. You know, you have the instant fire, so to speak, for your, your camping. Because the last thing you want to do in the dark is to scramble around looking for sticks that are wet uh, to get a fire going. All right, just want to share with you guys, again, I'm Deke. If you like the video, hit like. If you have any recommendations, um, some pros, cons, you know, if you have any other better ways you want to recommend, feel free to comment, uh, subscribe, and we will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Take care.